Konnichiwa everyone, I have arrived in Japan finally after years of planning. This video series will showcase most of the two weeks I spent in Japan, traveling from city to city. It won't particularly be in order in the cities I visited, but each episode will generally have the same type of vibe. In this episode, we are arriving at Hakone. We are staying in the Kowakin Mikawaya Ryokan, which I probably just butchered saying, but you get the idea. We came here to experience a traditional stay at a ryokan, which is essentially a Japanese style inn from the olden days. One of the most exciting things about this ryokan is that it features a private onsen and a full course Japanese dinner and breakfast. This ryokan is also over 140 years old, which is kind of crazy. We were super exhausted when we got there, so we couldn't wait to shower and get inside our private outdoor onsen. We took our shoes off to enter and after a bit of paperwork, we explored the lobby and breakfast area before heading into our room. Josh and I got our own room as well as Nikki and Kyle. Today was actually my birthday and their one year anniversary, so we chose a special place to celebrate. You have two rooms. Oh. Yes, this is a magnet. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. In traditional Japanese culture, when you enter an onsen, you actually have to be completely naked and shower beforehand. The onsen was outdoors, so we were able to see the night sky and the garden that was behind us. Once I was done washing myself, I was able to get in the super hot but relaxing spring water, which is drawn from the mountains behind the Ryukan. At first, the heat of the water was a little too much for me. I didn't think I'd be able to stay for longer than 5 minutes, but my body quickly adjusted and I was able to relax for about an hour. After a nice long bath, we got into our yukatas and were dined in our own private room with a ton of delicious traditional Japanese food. This was my first time ever trying sashimi and while I'm not the biggest fan, I'm glad I tried it for the experience. My favorite part was the delicious hot pot and the trio of plum wine. The next day, we got up early to explore the outside of the Ryukan and its walking paths. I think one of my favorite things about Japan was all the moss that was in every single corner of every single location. Due to the closure of the main hotel, Kawaii, it's no longer possible to pass through the hotel. Oh.
At some point, we ended up in Kyoto and it was one of my favorite cities we visited in my two week stay. As you can see, it's filled with beautiful landscapes that leave you in awe. We stopped at our first shrine and I was so excited to say a prayer. Granted, I had no idea what I was doing. I first had to wash my hands to signify purification before stepping up to say a prayer. To be honest, I was a little nervous making a fool of myself and I totally did, but I practiced with every shrine that I came across and got better. By the way, we'll go back and forth with the events we did in Kyoto in the future episodes, but for now, we're going to walk to a monkey park that we've been dying to go to. You'll see that we planned a ton of things to do in Japan, but honestly, just walking and sightseeing was one of my favorite activities. We were walking on the path to the monkey park and I couldn't help to take detours along the way. It was just too beautiful. To go see the monkeys, you had to walk up a steep trail with many hills and many stairs. The humidity was pretty high and it was kind of hot, but that didn't matter to me. I was in my element. I'm gonna come back to sit. We were halfway there, but the group was pretty tired from walking so much. Me, however, I had all the energy in the world. Nature just provides me with so much power and happiness. I could have walked all day, but Josh, Nikki, and Kyle were definitely troopers. All right, we're almost there. We're now almost at the top of the hill and we can hear so many monkeys. I followed this monkey that seemed to have a broken leg. It was limping around and I felt really bad for it, but the monkey moved with no problem, which gave me some relief. He was definitely his best self today. As you can see, there was a slide to go down the monkey hill. I really wanted to try it, but I figured it was just for kids but I really, really wanted to do it. We walked the last set of stairs and finally reached the top where all the monkeys were roaming.
It was pretty incredible to see all of them so relaxed and not afraid of the people around them. They kept telling us not to stare into the monkey's eyes as it could give the wrong kind of signal to our fellow monkey friends. But there was absolutely no problems and they were all very friendly. There was an indoor space where you were able to hand feed the monkey pieces of apples. It was a little nerve wracking since one of the monkeys that we fed was a mother carrying her baby. We didn't want to anger the mom in any way by somehow making her feel unsafe. There was this cute little baby monkey running around and I kept trying to follow it and I'm so glad I did. But trigger warning, there's poop ahead. I know it's kind of gross to watch it poop, but it's too cute not to look. <laughs> we spent some time trying to take pictures with the monkeys. We couldn't get too close to them, so it was kind of a challenge to get these. Well, for me anyway. After the monkey park, we made our way back down the hill into a beautiful shrine. Our next destination was the Irishiyama Bamboo Forest. These wooden planks are called Ima. They have prayers and wishes written by guests and hope the spirits read them. This was such a familiar train sound because I watched so much anime, so it was kind of surreal hearing it in person. We are reaching the entrance of the bamboo forest and it's beginning to feel like I'm entering a whole new world. This is one of Kyoto's top tourist places to visit, so we were eager to walk through it. There were so many people experiencing a rickshaw ride through the forest, and though it was tempting, I think I prefer just walking and taking my time gazing. The forest is mostly made out of one particular type of bamboo, called moso bamboo, that is actually not originally from Japan, but native to China and Taiwan.
These little guys right here are called Jizo statues, and their purpose is to protect the spirits of children who have passed away. We exited through a connecting neighborhood which greeted us with even more amazing paths to walk through. We saw this really cool old looking statue and decided to take pictures with it because, you know, why not? It was so surreal to see how clean the streets were. There was vegetation everywhere, moss everywhere, and it really made me feel like I was in a studio with Ghibli Town. Here's more Jizo statues along the way to protect the lost children and travelers. They look like a little family. Our journey is soon about to end, but walk with me a little more and lose yourself in the wonder that is Japan. I hope you enjoyed experiencing some of Japan with me. In my next episode, we'll continue walking into a new city and explore more of what Japan has to offer. That's so funny. <laughs> it's tasty. Well, it's good there for...